What is up guys, Archon Tsunami here bringing you guys another YouTube video. In today's video I'm going to explain how to get Lionheart on disc 1. There are two methods to doing this, uh, but before we get into the methods I need to explain how enemy leveling works, because in Final Fantasy VIII enemies actually level with you, in the sense that the three people in your party's level is added up, and then it's divided by three because that's how many people you have in your party, so it's the average. And then I think there's a difference between minus five or plus five, somewhere in between, that the enemy could also add or subtract from the level or the average. And this is important because enemies drop different items depending on what level they are. And in this case, you absolutely have to get to level 20 average and look for an enemy called T-Rexar. And I will go over why a little later in the video. But anyway, to get back into the two methods, the first method is that you can get it right away, right after you get out of timber. And this one's a bit more grindy because you have to get to level 30 in order to get the Adamatine from a certain enemy called Adamatoise. Uh, the second method, you get it a little later in the disc one. Uh, once you get to the Tomb of the Unknown King and you beat the Brothers GF, you get Minotaur and Sacred's cards. You have to refine the Minotaur card for 10 of the Adamatine. So one method, you get it a little later. The other method, you grind a little more and you get it earlier. So, without further ado, I'm going to explain how to do all that. So, the first method will be the card method, and this can be started as soon as you can explore a garden. Uh, ideally, you want to go from the first screen where Squall can move around near the save point and go upper left, and you'll see a kid come on screen. He's wearing a blue shirt, I think with a black stripe across it. You want to keep challenging him until you get a card called Mini Mog off of him. And once you get the Mini Mog card, you want to go down and save. After saving, you want to head to the cafeteria. There are two screens for the cafeteria. The first one has Cypher on it. The second one is the screen you're looking at now, which can be reached by going into the background a bit. And you want to go to the table on the right, press square. It'll ask you which one you want to talk to. You want to talk to the guy in the back, so you don't want to mash here, otherwise you'll end up facing the wrong guy. Once you t challenge him to a game of cards, you want to look for two cards here, the Quistus card and the Anoli card. Uh, the Quistus card is really powerful, which is why you want to get that. You always want to get that first. It's like the Mini Mog card in terms of power. Uh, everything else he has is really good too, so once you get the Quistus card, I would work on building up a little bit of a powerful card collection. The main card you always want to take though, if it's available, is the Anoli. And the reason the Anoli is so important is because you're going to need 20 of them in order to use the card mod ability to refine them into energy crystals. Now I know this sounds tedious and time consuming and the other method is probably starting to sound more appealing by now because all you have to do in the other method at most is level to 30. This method does come with its own benefits and that is even though he may not play an Anoli, he will play another card that you can probably get some value out of. One of the major cards you can get value out of is the Melbro. If you get four of them you can turn it into a Melbro tentacle which you can then use to give Quistus bad breath. And bad breath in this game is obscenely broken especially in disc 1, since almost all the bosses have some sort of vulnerability, even bosses in disc 2 have some sort of vulnerability to a status ailment. Uh, the other thing you can do with the Melbro cards is you can save up 24 of them as well, and turn them into 6 Melbro tentacles, and you will be one third of the way done with the Solomon Ring side quest to get Doom Train later on in the game. Plus you don't have to go fight Melbros and Ishtar and deal with bad breath and being ambushed by them and having to set up your status junctions later. It really does save you a lot of time in the end, trust me. Dealing with Melbros is no fun since you have to save after every one in order to hope you don't die to bad breath and it doesn't affect you with something that you should be guarded against. Uh, the other cards to look out for are Elastoids because you need Steel Pipes as well for the Solomon Ring quest to get Doom Train. You need six of them and you can get six Elastoids since they refine one to one. Uh, the other card to look for would be a behemoth. If you can get seven of those while you're doing this, you can also refine those into a barrier item, which gives Quistus Mighty Guard. Uh, Iron Giant, if you're going after other ultimate weapons on this disc, because you can get every ultimate weapon on disc one except for Irvin's. You could also go after the Chimera card for the same reason, since it turns into a regen ring, which you'll need for Rhinoa's best weapon. So yes, even though this method is pretty time consuming and the first step does take quite a while, you can get some major benefit out of it compared to the other method. So, now that you have gotten your 20 anolis, you can head to the front gate like you're supposed to for the story and get your summons, Quasicodal and Shiva. 
Once you get them, you go into the menu and make sure that Quetzalcoatl is learning the card ability. Then you head to the fire cavern like you're supposed to, take the test, beat Ifrit. Once you beat him, he'll join you. And instead of heading back to garden like you're supposed to, you want to head to the beach and go fight the enemies on the beach. You don't have to worry about what ones you're fighting because they are the only things that spawn there. You can get quite a bit of AP and some XP. And the reason we do this is because we need to be level 20 for the next step. And it also helps to learn card mod and card as soon as possible. And get Ifrit to 10 so he can start learning ammo RF. And the reason ammo RF is important is because that's the ability you're going to use to turn those two energy crystals you got with the Anoli cards into the pulse ammo you need to be one third of the way done with getting the weapon made. The next item on our list is the Dragon Fangs times 4 and this will be acquired the same way for both methods so I would like to say hi to the people rejoining us from the other method. You can find the T-Rex are in the surrounding Balaam Forest. As for what level the T-Rex are needs to be, it has to be between levels 20 and 29 and if you recall earlier I mentioned that the enemy level is based on your party's average, plus or minus 5, depending on whatever the game gives it. So what this means is that the earliest you can start farming level 20 T-Rex Rs is level 15. So once you hit 15, you want to save your game, so that way you don't overlevel. Because it is possible that he will not drop dragon things in 15 levels and you will overlevel. Uh, one key way of fighting them is to learn the card mod ability. And if you're doing Method 1, you already have this, and I'll recommend it for you guys. I've probably already recommended it for you guys in Method 2 as well. And the reason why you want this is because you need to card mod a Jesper. And the reason we do this is for the Black Hole item, which teaches Quistis the Degenerator ability, which you're about to see. And it's a really easy and important ability to get, because it, it's basically like casting death, and it does work on some bosses too. There is a small chance it will fail, so do keep that in mind. The other important thing for farming T-Rex Rs with this ability is that you want Quistus to be able to survive one tail swipe, which is usually around four or 500 damage. So you want Quistus to be at about seven to 800 HP. Otherwise, she'll die to the tail swipe and you won't get the degenerator off because he tends to open with tail swipe before you can do anything. As you can see here, I got six. I think the lowest amount you can get is two. So if you're going to save after getting two, you want to save in a different file so that way you don't potentially mess yourself up later. So, now that you're two-thirds of the way done, all that's left for you to do is complete the weapon. And to do that, you need the Admetine. And the way we do that in cards is we progress the story all the way to the Tomb of the Unknown King. And a quick side note, the Brothers GF has nothing to do with the actual reason you're being sent to the tomb. The reason you're being sent to the tomb in the story is to find a body that has numbers on it you need to give those numbers to the guy in Dueling City. So keep that in mind that once you get the Brothers GF, you need to locate the numbers. Or if you happen to come across the body while you're just going and getting the Brothers GF, that's fine too. Write them numbers down though and remember them. Anyway, to get the Brothers GF from the entrance of the tomb, you go up one screen and it should take you to a room where you can go north, south, east, or west. Or up, down, left, right. You always want to go right. Trust me on this, always go right. It'll take you to all the corridors. You always want to go right. And the room on the the first room on the far right side there has the boss sacred in it. You beat him, he unlocks the other two doors for you. And then you go out of his room and keep going right. It takes you to the corridor, keep going right. It'll take you to the top of the room, or top of the map, which will be the water pressure room. You hit the levee there and it lowers the water level. Come out of that room, keep going right until you eventually come out into the drawbridge room. Activate the drawbridge. From there, you can hit the touchpad or the select button, depending on what version you're playing. And then hit triangle. It should take you back to the start of the maze. And you should be facing the center of the room, the center of the maze. You just go north two screens, and it should spit you out in front of the drawbridge. And from there, you fight the Brothers GF. My only advice for you on the Brothers GF fight is to always cast float. I believe one of the brothers is carrying float magic. So you always want to have that. Otherwise you'll get hit by all their ground attacks and it really hurts to get hit by them depending how leveled you are and what magics you have so yeah with that done you can get the brothers cards from them after beating them you can card mod the minotaur card on the spot to get your adamantine make sure not to leave without getting the fallen soldiers numbers if you do then uh, the whole point of going there you'll have to make another trip essentially but once you go back to Dueling City, you have both the Adamantine and the number. You can go into the Weaponsmith shop in the mall district and make your Lionheart. 
congratulations, you now have the Lionheart on disc one, and you'll be able to use it going forward. It's a pretty fun weapon to have. It's not really game breaking since you have a one in five chance of actually getting Lionheart to go off. And the weapon itself doesn't really deal a whole lot of damage. It's more the junction system that deals damage. But anyway, congratulations. Hopefully you enjoy the weapon. And if you want to learn how to do Method 2, stick around. So I'm giving Method 2 with the idea that you didn't watch the first method in mind. So I might regurgitate some things. Anyway, you want to progress the story until you get Efrit from the Fire Cavern. And once you leave the Fire Cavern, you want to level up to 15. And from there, you want to play around in the forest around Balaam in order to get an enemy called the T-Rex to appear. And he has to be level 20 through 29 in order for it to drop the dragon things for you or have the potential for it. One way you can tell whether or not it will be a level 20 through 29 is if you try to draw from it and it has Fyra and Thundera. The magic changes based on the level of the enemy and level 20 through 29 just happens to have that combination. So once you kill it, whether you choose to brute force it down, keep in mind this enemy is really dangerous and has the highest HP in the game, or you choose to go out of your way to learn the card mod while leveling in order to make a Jesper into a black hole, so Quistus can learn Degenerator so you can just one-shot him, that's up to you. You don't have to learn the card mod ability, like I said, you can just do this without ever learning it. It's just a real pain to try to kill the T-Rexars. Uh, if you want a more in-depth guide on how to deal with the T-Rexar, please check the time for or the timestamp of 540 where I go in depth on it in the method one portion. Since it's the same for both methods, there's no difference outside of preference. So with that in mind, that is how you get the first item, Dragon Fangs. So that's the beach that you need to be on in order to get the Atomatoises to spawn for you. And how you get there is you complete the events on Timber. And once you get control of the world map and the train spits you out in front of Galbadia Garden and that forest, do not go through the forest to get to Galbadia. Instead, what you're going to do is you're going to follow the train north and keep going to Dalit. And from the train station, you're going to go left, and it should spit you out at the beach where you need to be, where these guys will spawn. If not, just go into Dalit and then exit and go north until you get to the ocean, and that's where you need to be as well. Uh, one tip I will give you is since you're probably going to be in the mid-20s when you get there and you need to be at least level 30 with everybody in your party in order to access the item you need, the Atomatine, I advise that you save your game, heal up, use the magical lamp if you haven't to get Diablos and fight him, and once you acquire him, set his ability for Mug so that we are learning Mug, and while you're trying to farm XP in order to get to level 30 to make them drop the uh, item you need, you can actually farm up your mug ability because it's going to be needed in the next part to get the laser cannons from an, the next enemy. So, now that you have the Admatine as well as the Diablos and mug ability, you can go back towards Galbadia Garden, go into the forest I said not to earlier, trigger the dream sequence with Laguna, and once inside you need to locate this room here. Because there's a particular enemy that spawns in this room, and it's called the Elastoid, which you're seeing on screen, you need to use the Mug ability on a level 30 plus Elastoid in order to get the laser cannon item from it. You need three laser cannons in order to refine them into the 15 ammo needed for the Lionheart. So once you kill three level or hit Mug three level 30 plus Elastoids, you can then finish the dream sequence and head back to Dalit, which you're seeing here. From there, you just head back to the blacksmith or whatever you want to call it, the junk shop and you can create your Lionheart. Congratulations, you now have the Lionheart using the second method and didn't have to use your card collection to make it at all. Hopefully it feels a bit more rewarding than doing it the other way around. I know it does for me when I do it this way. So that's how you get the Lionheart on disc one with cards and without cards. So hopefully you guys liked the video. Let me know down below. If you guys want a follow-up video for the other weapons you can get on disc one, I have no problem doing a guide for those as well. They're a little less complicated than what Squalls is, but like I said, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Leave a like, subscribe, all that stuff. I'll be playing uh, Final Fantasy VIII as well. I'll be continuing my playthrough on th of the remaster in the Twitch description down below. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you later. Peace.